So what I've done today is I've invited two of my leads to come and talk about what they do, why this is important, um, what it would mean if that pay was to be reduced, especially as we are talking about going into a presidential election. So we will go from our smallest election to our largest election, um, and this could be catastrophic. So I'm hopeful that they will come up and shed more light than I can even um, shed at this time. Thank you, Clerk Brown. Um, I, I, I'm happy to entertain a, a, a motion to provide some speaking time to the leads and also the others on this issue that you've raised. Um, I, I think it's in it's in the context of the update, but that that's fine. Um, should we set a, a speaking time at? There, I'll take recommendations. Um, My preference would be that the leads be allowed to say whatever is on their heart and not give them a time limit. Okay. Um, would 15 minutes be sufficient? I would accept that motion. Um, For 15 minutes. So moved, uh, I'll second that. Um, uh, this is procedural, I'll just take a voice vote. All those in favor of the 15 minute window for the two leads to present, uh, say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed, none. Yeah, feel free to yeah, invite up uh, your folks. Um, yeah. Mr. Chair, if I may, can I provide some background information on this prior to? Um, um, yeah, I, well, that's comments? that's fair. That's fair. Uh, so perhaps, um, yeah, if we can just get some staff yeah. for additional feedback before the folks come up, that might be helpful. Ms. Turner King, do you have any insight into um, what's going on here? So first, I would recognize that the county values our current election workers and the hard work that they're putting into making the elections run smoothly. The county wants to compensate all election workers for that work in accordance with the law. This week, it was discovered through the assistance of the election workers that there was a discrepancy between how the state statute is written, how our salary ordinance is written, and how those individuals are um, being paid, um, specifically the absentee board members. Um, the county is currently working on resolving this issue. I've been involved in multiple meetings this week trying to resolve this issue. In order to do so, the county is requesting that the clerk provide some additional information, and upon the receipt of that information, appropriate actions can be taken to amend our salary ordinance so that pay is in accordance with state law. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold questions, I think, till the end on this one, but uh, Clerk Brown, you had two personnel you wanted to have speak as well? Yes, I do. Yes, please. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, no, if you don't mind approaching the podium and also just give your full name for the record, uh, that will that will help as well. Good, after, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Lettner uh, from Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Peg Roberts from Bloomington. And uh, thank you for having us. We'll, we'll be as expeditious as possible. Um, I did just want to mention that Peg, uh, Peggy and I are both co-leads, uh, a bipartisan team. Uh, we are conducting our poll worker training as we speak, as we did our first one this morning, and there's one starting right now, uh, and we'll have two more in the morning. Those poll workers are coming in for two hour training courses, and then we'll be back on the days they're scheduled to do their duties. Everything else is done by the leads to summarize it. So six to eight weeks before the actual voting starts, the entire bipartisan group of leads, myself and my Democrat co-lead, Peg and her Republican co-lead, we meet and we re-engage with voter registration and election supervisor to get back together at, uh, following the previous election and review anything that had changed and we need to know about. Uh, we also discuss our overall plans for that for the next election, what the dates are, the location, the layout, integrating new people, like new leadership, like we have right now, and as well as get our ID badges reissued so we can proceed as needed. 
you know, from that point, we basically break into what I'd call the partisan activities, where me and my co-lead will work pretty much together, and Peg and hers will as well. And we'll start updating our master poll worker listing, uh, adding new volunteers, making some hard decisions on not asking certain people back based on their performance in the previous election. Uh, then we have to contact them to see whether they're interested in working in the current election coming up uh, or whether they're not. And this takes some time, some resources, some meeting. You know, we've previously had permission from election supervision that it's okay to come in a, on occasion to Election Central and do this work and be compensated for it. And the current uh, election supervisor, I made sure I asked him of that when he when we first met. So then somewhere around, uh, uh, and, and we're only asking, we, we've only put down our time when we're at Election Central. There's, Peggy would tell you better, but there's hours and hours of time spent at home on our own personal devices, uh, calls, texts, et cetera, where we're, get, where we're working to get our final schedule set that we don't, we don't, we don't ask and we don't expect compensation for that. Do you want to add anything? I pretty much do everything. Oops, I'm sorry, can you speak to the microphone? Thank you, appreciate it. I do everything at home. So I just go ahead for these first six weeks or so, I just donate my time. I feel for myself, I feel I'm just giving back to my party. I don't expect to be compensated. If you want me to, I'd be more than glad to put the hours down. But I can tell you probably I work maybe 15, 20 hours within those six weeks. It's not a, a, a one day or two day thing. Uh, I mean, I was getting emails and texts up to this morning and that goes on every day. And then, I mean, it's, it's not just a, a one day thing like a lot of your, like the regular election day is. We have more responsibilities. So, so then I'm, I'm, I'm four to five weeks before the voting starts, we get, we coordinate our, our, uh, our dates of early voting with voter registration, we we get the necessary onboarding paperwork completed for each poll worker and, at, into Election Central and schedule their training dates and times. We send out a mass email to all of them, uh, com communicating how many people or how many people we need per day, and of course everybody has a different. Uh, a different objective and how long, how much they want to work. So then we have to match that with what our needs are and, uh, and their training. So three or four weeks before we're, uh, we're reviewing all those individual worker responses and we draft a work schedule for both shifts, the morning and the afternoon for all 20 days of early voting. I mean, election day is one thing. That's one day. We're doing this for 20 days. 28 so, days. Uh, 21 is 28. it? 28. There's, there's 28 days yes, of early. Yes, sir. <laughs> you're working harder than you're even admitting. I Thank couldn't. you. Help me up, <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, okay, so then we finalize our work schedule for the poll workers. And then what do we ne do next? We refinalize and we refinalize. So we're constantly massaging it to get to the final end product. We. I sent out four different schedules. And the last one was last Friday. I had to update it again. We format that final work schedule into an Excel format, which we do on our own personal devices on our time. And we send it out to all those poll workers so they know what they're working. This is three to four weeks ahead of time. So they've got adequate time if something happens to let us know and we can make modifications. It also goes to the election supervisor and voter registration including Bonnie, who's a, a key cog in this whole thing. So she knows who's working when and has timesheets ready for all these people. Actually, they're ready today for the people who are in training. So then a, you know, a week or two before we attend our training, which was last week and a little bit yesterday. Uh, and we can 
and uh, we are sure all everything, all the necessary items are on site at election operations for the start of early voting next Wednesday. We're, we attend and kind of co-lead the poll worker training today and tomorrow, even though the training uh, re the training professionals from the county do portions of it. We make sure we set out our expectations of the poll workers daily business. Uh, so we do that. And then, well, av tomorrow afternoon, we're going home for four or five days off or four days off. And then we start voting. And yeah, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. We're not like the election day people when they go in for training they fill out their paperwork and also give their voided checks we have to have our people go down to election central and fill out their paperwork and do their uh, voided checks we go down two or three times within this time period to see who has not filled out their paperwork then we, we got to them. Then we have to go back and contact them and say you need to go down and fill out your paperwork. I mean, this is this is continuous. We give them a deadline, and up until that deadline, we are constantly either on the phone, texting, or emailing these people to get them to get their paperwork done. <clears throat> so that pretty much, you know, illustrates what we do prior to voter one ever walking in the door. I, I have what we do once they're in. I don't know if we'd want to go any farther than that, but uh, I'll leave it to Ms. Brown to see if she, I've, if we've adequately explained what we do or not. You Not only have you adequately explained, you've actually, for me, justified an increase, um, but thank you. You're welcome to go on if you like. No, I think I think I think the the, the question it seemed to be was, you know, understandably, you know, we haven't had a voter a voter one walk through the door yet. Why are these folks doing all this activity? And I think that's what I was trying to lay out. We've already now. been working for one month, right, or more, yeah. Right. And a voter hasn't walked in the door, right? right. And you do more. Right, we and, and what? And I think you said it best. I, I heard some. I think it was you said it, or you wrote it. But in a, on Wednesday, when the when the doors open, we're we're poll inspectors mm -hmm. for that day. Correct. And we're poll inspectors on Thursday and Friday, and all the other twenty five days. And an inspector currently is paid at one sixty five per day. What on election day? What is your stipend? 140. So you are doing more for less, correct? I'll let someone else decide that. Yeah. I, I just wanted to, I was just hoping, I, I appreciated the opportunity. Thank you very much for inviting us just to tell you, because Peggy has done this several years. I've got one election under my belt as a lead. But I was proud to be a poll worker for several years before that. And I was very proud to be asked to be a lead for this for my party. And I I think it's a very important position. And Peggy, you'll get the last say. Go ahead, the last say. Um, it's been a privilege. I've really enjoyed working this. And I, I think people do not understand just how much work the leads put in. Agreed. It's not just a a one day thing. Agreed. So yeah. Well, Peggy, thank you, and John, thank you. I appreciate your your insight into just the, the hard work that's done to get ready for our early voting. Uh, I, I think at this point, I, I do obviously think there are probably questions from the dais of the board here for uh, parties in the room. Um, I'll start with uh, uh, Judge Benkart or uh, Judy uh, Judith. Uh, do you have questions of anybody on what's been discussed here that you'd like to ask? I think I do as to Molly, can you tell me whether it's an issue of how much is being paid or whether it's being paid correctly pursuant to state law? The issue is 
Okay, so our salary ordinance breaks it down for absentee boards, early voting, absentee boards, counters, and absentee boards leads. Those positions do not exist in the state statute. The state statute just says absentee voter board members. The statute says that um, board members are entitled to a per diem to be set by the county fiscal, so the county council. Our salary ordinance provides for a per diem on election day only. Um, otherwise, it's an hourly rate. So we need to make these two items match. So it's not a question of, is anyone doubting the hard work that the leads are putting in? No, we all acknowledge that they're doing a fantastic job of making our elections run smoothly. It's not that we don't want to pay them. It's just, we have to make our salary ordinance and the state statute match. Okay. All right. Well, that helps clear that part up. And I hope that makes our people who have been working so hard understand where we are, what can be done to fix, I mean, where are you in trying to work that out then? So I had sent an email um, requesting information, but at this point, what would help to expediate the process is if we could schedule a meeting, we can sit down, figure out it, we can ask the questions that we need to, and then I can use that information to amend the salary ordinance. And a meeting of who? I, I mean, it would be beneficial if um, one someone who can speak to exactly what Peggy and um, John just said, what they do, how often they're doing it, how many hours they're working on it, because the, all of that is going to be information that the council will want to see when they're considering on setting that per diem. It, and... In most instances, there's a job description. Um, we do not have any job descriptions for election workers. That would be helpful. Um, so if we could even go as far as creating those documents, that would that would help a lot. Okay. So they would need to, you would want full workers there, but who else would you want in the meeting? Um, I think the election supervisor, whoever can speak to, what the poll workers are doing and how often they're doing it. I don't know who that person is. Okay. Thank you, Judith. I, I do have a few clarifying questions just to understand scope and jurisdiction because we just mentioned a lot of names here. So um, first of all, um, I, I think Judith was getting there with like the who the we is. Um, what is the board's oversight of compensation of employees that are working on elections? We obviously administer the election, but I think questions of compensation at least new to me, uh, but what what is the board's oversight of the compensation questions according to code as you understand it, Molly? Or Ms. Turner so for clarification, are you asking specifically to absentee voter board members or all? Let's, let's just keep it to the issue that was brought today. Okay. So yeah, what is the board's oversight uh, on compensation for the absentee board workers leads? Um, what's our role in this conversation? So the per diem is to be set by the county council. Okay. And I think the election board's role is to assist in providing information that council would feel is necessary to set that per diem. Okay. Uh, and so the second piece sounds like what is the board, uh, the obligation for us then to develop the job description under code? Is that the board's responsibility or does that fall to the administration through the clerk's office and the supervisor to set the job description. Basically what I'm asking is, are we writing it here or are you writing it in your roles uh, operating in the, the election on behalf of the board? Um, and maybe I'll ask Molly first and then of course the call, but yeah, I'm uh, sorry, Clerk Brown, yeah. I think that the election board should have some weight in on the job descriptions because you are overseeing all of the elections. But if you need to be in that meeting, I don't, I mean, I think that's an up to you decision. Clerk Brown, how would you like to proceed on that part? Because I think that's a new ground for us to write job descriptions from here, but yeah. you tell me how you'd like I to I don't know it. any of the 92 counties who have been asked to provide job descriptions for election workers. This is what it takes to implement an election in 2023. And these are the people that we need to help us do that. Um, this feels like a solution in search of a problem. I... I am just beside myself that this is even on the table as we prepare to go into uh, early voting and election day. Um, I I definitely feel I could make a case for why they need to make the same amount that people do on election day 
Um, but I can tell you this, one of the leads, not here today, but one of the leads did say, we will get you through this election, but if the, essentially, if the pay, the pay is going to be reduced, good luck finding people next year. Okay. But it sounds like John enumerated a job description, like right in front of us. That, and that's how I feel. I feel like, okay, if you want to know what they do, then refer to this meeting. I'm good. I would be good with that because I got things to do between okay. now and election day. Okay. Um, I have one more question. So is the bottom line at this point, I, I, I may have caught it in the conversation. Um, are the folks that are currently working the election that starts next week uh, going to be compensated at the level as promised or offered in, in the 2023 cycle or not? Like I have heard there's been a, a, a transfer of funds back and forth, but are these folks going to be compensated at that level or is there some other level that's now happening right now? Our salary ordinance only provides a per diem um, for election day. It specifically says absentee boarders, board leads paid per person per election day, $140. It doesn't speak two days before election. And that's why that's what we have to fix. Um, obviously, individuals currently working the election will be compensated. We have to compensate them. When this change happens, I, I can't really say because I think the council is trying to find a solution and we're just asking for a certain level of cooperation. Okay. What, what actions do the board think exist at this point to address the problem? I have my own view, which sounds like this is very much a conversation that doesn't happen in this space. I mean, we're administering the election, right? Uh, but, but the compensation questions are new and, um, interesting, you know, a mere few days out. So I guess I would, I'm open to some comments, suggestion as to what anyone thinks the obligation of us is to weigh in this, because we could take motions all day to direct the creation of job descriptions and all this other stuff. But I don't, I'm, I don't think jurisdictionally that is here. Uh, are there some other comments of what the, the motion or the action is to address the question? Or is this, does this belong to another body that, that, that should have the decision making? I, I basically I don't think I, I don't think I'm aware of and I'm not hearing that we could set the rate at anything at this point if I wanted to triple it. I mean, I'm not I don't think that's in our budget or obligation or our duties here. So I'm just trying to get a sense of scope and duties. But do, Dennis, anyone else have, have anyone else have other ideas on how to address the question that's been raised here today? I do not. I I but I am simply beside myself that we're even we're even here. Um Again, I'm happy to appear. Be, I, this money has already been allocated. It has already been budgeted. This, you know, this has been the practice under several administrations. Um, there's been we've been judicious with this money. There's been no secret about which way it is going. We have leads. We have workers. We have election day roles, and we have um, the commensurate pay for those roles. Um, I, I, again, I'm just, I'm just beside myself and even the inference that um, the pay could be lower is just, it's just appalling. Uh, uh, Ms. Turner King, did you, first of all, I have a question to follow on that. Uh, is this the only, because it's a municipal election, are there other equity, other entities that would have a stake in deciding compensation for a municipally run or we, an election that is being run on the municipality's behalf versus a, a general election cycle in like 2024? Are there any distinctions there that we need to consider here too? So because this is a municipal election, the city is responsible for reimbursement per state statute. The statute that refers to the per diems um, for absentee voter board members specifically references the county fiscal body. Okay. So it would not involve the city um, in setting that per diem. Okay. So we have a fiscal control question, which comes from county council. We have an administration of the election question, but that activity is primarily run through the election operations and the clerk. Um, I think I got my head around that part. Uh, Judith, do you have additional questions or comment? I just one, I guess, and, and it is directed at, at you, Molly. Um, so right now, we're walking into this time period of 
early election and people will get paid as previously been paid in previous early elections. Am I correct? Okay. You were going to, it looks like I'm not asking you what I need to ask you. It, it's okay. We're but working then, through it. I, I don't, okay. I don't anticipate the salary amendment. The salary ordinance is going to change tomorrow. Right. Okay. Um, so we're going to pay people as we have been paying people. Okay. So it may be looking at making sure we're all lined up correctly by next election. Is that? I would like, like for next election. Okay. Um, primary next May. Pay. I would like okay. for the compensation of the election workers for next year to be aligned with what the codes say. And hopefully, um, and that even goes a little bit further beyond absentee board members. I know we're only talking about absentee board members now, but um, the compensation statutes for election workers differ in who sets what per diem. Um, and so it, it's a little right now we're focused on absentee uh, leads because okay. that is the problem that was brought to our attention. But it goes a little bit bigger. OK, and you we have time to do that by May. And there are times when the clerk's going to be able to give you that information, the poll workers can be brought in and we can work on that for the primary by the, by the time the primary comes around next May. Correct. Yes. OK, thank you. That's all. Clerk Brown, do you have additional comment or question? I, I do not at this time. Thank okay. you. Um, I don't I don't have any motions I would offer. I would just say I think that um, having been someone who's worked in contract spaces before not having a list of duties before me means sometimes there's creep, right? And it seems like um, there are opportunities in the work of the leads that you've taken on a lot of stuff and 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 not having that enumerated in some place uh, means your scope, your scope creep is could be significant. You know, if, if you take on more duties with each cycle, depending on um, what, what it takes to get the job done. So I want to thank you both. I mean, for giving us an education on what it is that you do setting us up. I mean, and, and I want to say, at least for my seat, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's a democratic lead, uh, the work you're doing, especially in our election cycle here, which has a lot of Democrats in it. I want to thank you for that. But setting that aside, I mean, I, I guess where I'm at is that I would very much like to, by the next board meeting to have some clarity from staff, council um you know if they're a county council staff uh legal department and and the other offices here including the clerk's office on, on what the path forward is to make sure that you're made whole and if you're made whole in the cycle great if we're made whole in the may cycle that's very important too but we, we don't want to be here next may uh with the same conversation and it potentially as clerk brown pointed out different people that may feel a little slighted one way or another but i, I feel like the solution is present. It's just, uh, it's going to take some folks getting together between now and the next meeting to come back with um, what the path is. Uh, I'm not persuaded that, um, you know, our model here in Monroe County uh, at the board level has direct oversight to tell anyone to do anything on this. Uh, we are not Marion County where we've divested the HR responsibilities to the election board here. Uh, those opportunities are still, um, you know, delegated to the clerk. You, you've not, we've not taken a vote to put this at, at our table to make these decisions. But I would just ask that um, hopefully we get some clarity by the next meeting. So, um, I, I, and as you all know, I, I have no problem saying these words in public. This is where these discussions need to happen. But um, I, I, that's all I'm going to say on it today. And let's, and I'll again leave the floor open to any motions on this particular matter. Are there any motions? I had, I just comments? wanted, yeah, if sorry. I could add, I, I didn't intend to, I certainly don't intend to get in into arguments. 38 years of writing collective bargaining agreements and salaried uh, management, uh, personnel management, people can interpret things differently. And when I look at the salary ordinance that uh, the counselor is referring to, there's there's categories of folks that are only there on election day. Mm -hmm. Then there's categories of folks that are only there during early voting. Never the twixt com com combined. I'm actually a poll inspector on election day. I get $165. But it says in the sa in the salary uh, ordinance for absentee board leads paid per person per election day does not say on election day. I said twenty. Nicole corrected me. Twenty eight days 
There's 28 election days for us to be paid 140. If the issue becomes, well, what about before election day? The stuff I just described, that that's fine. If that needs to be looked at, but I don't think there's any doubt that the ordinance uh, supports well one a daily 140 when we're working during the early voting election. That's all I had. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it, John. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I did put the salary ordinance up on the screen so the election board members could see it. Well, yeah, I would. Um, <clears throat> I look forward to an update in our next meeting about where this lands. Um, clearly, there's more questions and answers that have to be unpacked here. Um, and but I, I appreciate everyone raising the attention to the public of uh, what's going on in that space. So thanks on that. Um, moving on with the agenda, Clerk Brown, uh, we're still early in the updates. Do you have additional updates for early voting uh, that you wish to share with the group today? Other than election or early voting starting next Wednesday, uh, it normally would start on a Tuesday because of Col uh, Columbus Day that pushes it back one day. So um, anybody who wants to vote and register to vote, you need to do that by Tuesday because the first day of early voting begins on Wednesday. Um, I believe Brian has some campaign finance information to impart. Yes, uh, everything else has already been been mentioned. So thank you for making my job easy today. Uh, by October 20th, uh, any candidate that is listed on the May primary ballot needs to have their completed CFA 4 form, have it turned in by noon on October 20th. That is the report of receipts and expenditures. Uh, thank you, Ryan. I, I, I did have that. one question on that. Um, yes, sir. I, this is where I always get caught up on this. So it, that's CFAs for candidates that were successful in the primary, as well as those that were not successful or all due that's October correct. 20. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, and this would be just a general service announcement to folks that, yeah, if you are unsuccessful in your pursuits in May, it doesn't mean your job's done. There's some additional filings and paperwork they need to do to close out committees and let people know um, how, how your expenditures are made. So um, I just want to make sure that's out there, but thank you for raising that up. Uh, yeah. Uh, Judith. Yeah. Oh, I see there's a question in chat, TSD. Maybe there's a comment. I don't know if it's Jermaine. Uh, could you bring that up? Oh, Molly just needs promoted up. Uh, she looks like we handled that. Ask and answer. Okay, it's very done. good. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's a early voting. Um, and then election day updates. Are there any additional updates for election day proper uh, that, that need to be raised today? No, everything, uh, like, like I mentioned, everything else was already brought up. Um, I mean, the, all the ballots have, have been ordered. Uh, of course, you were there for the LAT testing. We had the three machines uh, that we tested with 100% accuracy. Um, other than that, uh, we're good to go. Thank you for that. Uh, Clerk Brown, additional updates there? I have no additional updates. Kurt, thank you. All right, Vote Center Study Committee updates. Let's move on to that. I think we have a few more appointments to make, and I hope that today we can move forward with getting that group moving. Um, first, I'll, I'll turn to uh, Judith Benkhart. Are there any additional appointments from the Republican uh, Party chair that uh, we need to make today? There are. Um, Taylor Bryant sent me her list. They are William Ellis, da Danny Shields, and herself. Uh, Danny Shields. Yes. And, uh, and Taylor, Taylor herself. Bryant. Yes. It's like the all-star team over there. Okay. <laughs> um, I did say that. Um, all right. And uh, Clerk Brown, do you have additional appointments at this time? I hope to have one more. Um, we have someone, again, it's very difficult to find an independent, a person who's truly independent, but I believe that I will be able to meet with someone next week. Um, so if they're not able to join the first meeting, perhaps the, the next meeting. Yeah. Good. Uh, as for me, I do have one additional appointment and in the same position where my, my third is um, elusive. I've asked a few folks that uh, have asked me to consider a few other folks, but I'm on it. But my uh, appointment from the Democratic Party side is uh, the student appointment, Evan uh, Anish Nae, and that's N-A-Y-E-E. -E. I'll uh, provide the full spelling uh, later, but he is a student uh, registered here in Monroe County. And uh, with Evan, N-A-Y-E-E, -E, and then Taylor, William, and Danny, that's four today. Uh, that brings our total to the quorum, right, which should be at least the quorum. I do have a, a procedural question before we take votes. Uh, Ms. Turner-King, if you can answer it for me. Um, 
as is the case with other boards and commissions in the county, there, there are vacancies on boards and commissions that can still continue to meet. Uh, I don't see any reason to hold up this body starting to do its work uh, while we await the last, I believe, two appointments at this point. Uh, so I guess that's nine that we have. Um, what would be any special requirements to make sure that group would meet if there's nine of 11 appointed um, that we would need to consider before they get going? So the membership of the vote steering committee, um, I believe, was 11 yeah. total. That means the quorum would be six. Um, so as long as six individuals can meet in person, because there has to be a quorum in person, um, the voting steering committee could begin meeting. Now, those meetings would be subject to open doors, so they need to be noticed um, and open to the public. Okay, very good. And then just for a point of clarification, similar to the other ad hoc committees and boards of the county, um, the the staff that would be staffing the committee would be, um, I presume, the, the election operations staff that would be assisting as well. Uh, is that your understanding? That would be. Okay. So um, we've got some staff. We've got enough names to call a, a, a committee. Let's just get some folks slotted. So first, I'll, I'll take a motion to appoint... Um, on Bonk, the names uh, William Ellis, Danny Shields, Taylor Bryant, and Evan Nayi to the vote study or vote center study committee. So moved. All right. With a, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you. And we'll go ahead to a vote. Cheryl, we'll call roll. Yes. 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 All right. So motion passes. Uh, and then secondly, um, I guess I guess we can make the motion to make it official. Um, I'd like to make a motion to uh, direct staff to reach out to the uh, appointees to find a date suitable for them to begin their work and make accommodations for public meeting, including uh, notice and um, facilities that we can broadcast and make those meetings public. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and call the roll on that motion. Um, David Henry. Yes. Judith Yes. Yes. All right. We got a committee going. Let's get them to work. I'm looking forward to kicking that off. So thank you on that. Um, agenda items to go. Um, new business. Are there any new business before the board today? I only had uh, the, a question that was brought up uh, by Scott Tibbs through an email. And <clears throat> I don't know how you want it, it. I don't know if it's necessary to actually um, read any response by the clerk, but he basically wanted to know the um, how much the MCCSC was going to be paying um, to operate the voter precincts outside of Bloomington city limits. And I believe um, my question from that is I'm, ass I'm assuming that any and all um, Expenses are not paid by MCCSC, but there are there's some kind of division. Is that correct? There's a there's thank you. There's a formula that is used um, that we are we are given a form to list our expenses. I'm not able to say today. Here's the total that the schools are going to pay after the election. Once we have reviewed all our bills and payroll and things like that, um, and we have a total for how much it cost us to run, to oversee this election, then we will complete that formula and divvy it to the schools and to the city of Bloomington. Um, it's not 100% because we already own the equipment. If they had had to hire, um, if they had had to hire an election vendor to come in and do it all, like for instance, in Hawaii, Heart Inner Civic runs every aspect from beginning to end for an election. If you had to pay them to do it all, it would obviously be substantially more. We own the equipment, so we're able to facilitate it, but there are still expenses. And so we will know those expenses once the election is over and a percentage of that will be billed to the schools, a percentage of that will be billed to the city. And yeah. that formula is, to, is it's from the state formula legislation. from the state. I don't even okay. look at it. Math was not my jam. Okay. So <laughs> I don't even look at it. I trust people who were better at math than I to uh, take those numbers, crunch them, and divvy it out accordingly. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judah, thank you for raising the question uh, from email. I appreciate it. And Clerk Brown, your response. Um, is there any other additional new business before the board today? No. 
Um, I would just ask maybe, I, and maybe this would have been more appropriate in the, the report out. Um, can we get a status report on the website? Um, is that pointing directly to the new material at this point from from the board of our, our vote, voter website? So we are using the, we were referring everything from the Monroe County voters website to the county website. My understanding was there were some things that were not, it was not timely and not in real time. Did you want to say something else? Ryan, did you have additional? Everything, we, we've sent everything to TSD to put on to the county website, forms, dates, times, et cetera. So are, is that, I haven't looked at the website today. Is that material current in everyone's view ahead of elections starting next week or early voting? Yes. Okay. So that, at least that's publicly out there through the website where it needs to be for Wednesday. Okay. That's my only real question today on that. Um, okay. Thank you for that. Other additional new business today? Any other questions? I noticed that we left off in the last, uh, the, the agenda was posted outside an opportunity for public comment. And I want to make sure we provide that opportunity, of course, um, if the board um, doesn't object. Um, okay. Uh, is there any public comment in the room? Uh, if, if so, please approach the podium and give us your full name. And if uh, online, if you have it in the chat, feel free to ask a question in that space as well. We got folks a moment for public comment. And TSD, if I could see the chat in front of us here, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, with no chat visible or anyone at the podium at this point, um, we are in the thick of it. So we're no longer recessing things. We're, or sorry, we're no longer adjourning things. We're recessing things until the next moment we need to be called up. I would just ask, uh, Clerk Brown, when do you think the next time we may be together here um, as we start approaching early voting? Between now and early voting, I could only imagine us being called together if there is an issue with an absentee ballot application where we would need to um, make a decision as a board whether to accept or reject um, that application. Um, for those people familiar with House Bill 1334, um, there there are anticipated issues just because people are not used to having to submit a photocopy of their ID um, as a means of confirming that they are who they say they are. So you have the option to submit a photocopy of your government issued ID or the numbers, the identifying numbers, your social security or your driver's license number or your voter ID number. Um, and so I anticipate that there will be more of those now with this the passage of this new bill than previous. Um, but I, to my knowledge, I've not been made aware that we have any of those pending at this time. Okay. Um Ms. Turner King, just remind me one more time, when we go to a, a, a recess instead of adjournment, um, there's a, usually say something to me when I do this. So uh, what is the line? That you're if you recess yeah. um, and do not state the date in which you're going to reconvene, the notice has to be um, published in accordance with Open Door. Okay. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to recess. I will make a motion to recess. Second. Okay. Uh, procedurally, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. All right. Ayes have it. This meeting is recessed until date certain. Uh, welcome to early voting season, everybody. Good luck and thank you, everybody, for your hard work. Thank you.